The South Vietnamese Army, or Arvin, was one of the first militaries to adopt the Cadillac Gauge Commando, an armored car whose list of achievements includes my wife calling it cute. In 1963, the U.S. Advanced Research Projects Agency, later rebranded as DARPA, purchased two of the brand new V-100 Commandos and sent them to South Vietnam for evaluation. This 4x4 combat car could be equipped with either two M1919 or M37 30 cal machine guns, as per the original tables of organization, but could also be converted for 130 cal and 150 cal to bolster its firepower. Arvin liked what they saw and began widespread adoption in 1965 via USAID. It was classified the XM706. I wanted to know about how South Vietnam used the commando, and luckily, someone slid into my Instagram DMs and sent me a bunch of original Arvin organization tables. I've uploaded some of them to my site, including almost the entire Arvin Airborne Division linked below. One use case for the commando was the Regional Force Mechanized Platoon. These were platoons of six commando armored cars and a one-ton truck, plus two elements of dismounted cavalrymen. The truck was a Dodge M601, which was a version of the civilian Dodge Power Wagon made for export to foreign militaries. For anyone curious, when Congress was thinking about sending more gear to South Vietnam just before its collapse, the unit cost of the commando was listed as $52,875 or $301,000 in 2023. By comparison, an M48A3 patent at the time was $280,000, equivalent to $1.6 in 2023. The mechanized platoons were mainly for conducting rear area security and maintaining lines of communication. This entailed escorting convoys, clearing and patrolling roads, and acting as mobile guards for bases. Doctrinally, one regional mech platoon could provide security for 45 kilometers or 28 miles of road. About 49% of missions involving the commando and their U.S. Army unit were convoy escort missions, while 15% were road patrols and 13% were base defense missions. Based on the assessment of the U.S. 500th Transportation Group, Especially in areas where VC convoy ambushes were common, convoys experienced a much lower ambush rate when the V-100 arrived in theater. It was noted by the US that the mere presence of the V-100 increased the morale of all convoy personnel by its armored appearance and the quality of its weapon system. A big upgrade from the Jeep. Thanks to their armor resistant against small arms, mobility, and relative firepower, commando units could also reinforce isolated outposts under attack or conduct small-scale attacks themselves, although for this they'd ideally be reinforced by one to two infantry platoons as their dismount strength was limited. This mission set was essentially half of the traditional U.S. Army military police purpose. But, the Regional Force Mechanized Platoon lacked other MP duties, like holding enemy prisoners of war and law enforcement in garrison. In the Regional Force Mech Platoons, troopers also had cavalry designations. The French formed many of Arvin's precursor units in the 1950s, so influence would make sense. The main purpose of the Regional Force was to free up regular combat units to carry out offensive operations. During the war, South Vietnam was split into four core tactical zones in the Capital Military District. They served a dual function, serving both as operational headquarters and civil administration. Under one hierarchy, the Corps commanded Arvin operational forces like infantry divisions and brigades. But, Corps commanders also initially appointed the nation's 44 province chiefs who were nominally colonels in the army. Each province chief controlled a regional force sector, charged with territorial defense duties within their provinces. The regional force was the province-wide force, while the popular force was basically a static militia for defending individual villages. Both types of units would often be placed under the control of a subsector, which was under the control of a district chief, nominally a major. As of 1965, each regional force sector was intended to have one mechanized platoon. Each regular army armored cavalry squadron also had an identical scout platoon from 1967, although in practice, these armored cars weren't under the squadron's own control. 
they were more or less introduced to conduct convoy security missions to free up the bulk of the armored force, which was mounted in M113s, to conduct combat operations. At the basic level of the platoon was the combat section. From 1965, each section had two XM706 armored cars, the Cadillac Gauge Commando. But in earlier TONEs from 1963, they had one Canadian 1500 weight armored truck and one Lynx scout car with an unarmed cupola. These were among the many World War II era vehicles left behind by the British when the French reoccupied Indochina. The armored truck was for carrying the infantry component of the platoon, but with the commando's adoption, they were split evenly. Each car was crewed by a car leader, one of which would be the section chief, a gunner for the twin 30 cals, and a driver. Between the two cars, eight cavalrymen would also be carried in each section. This included two so-called chiefs of cavalrymen, one of which was actually armed with an M1918 A2 BAR, as well as an assistant BAR man and five cavalrymen, as well as a single M79 grenade launcher among the section. At this point in 1965, Arvin was using World War II surplus like the M1 Garand and M2 Carbine. It wouldn't be until 1968 that the new M16A1 started to be issued to South Vietnamese troops. By the 1971 TONEs, the Garands were replaced by M16s and the BAR by the M60. The platoon as a whole had two combat sections with four cars total and 16 dismounts. Above them, an HQ section also had two parts. One was a command car for the platoon leader, gunner for the commando, driver, radio operator, and aid man, and a support car led by the assistant platoon leader who doubled as a political warfare officer. Conceptually, the office was almost identical to a communist political officer, directly copied from Chiang Kai-shek, who in turn was inspired by the USSR system in the 1920s. Both South Vietnam and Taiwan were military dictatorships in the mid-1960s. The Pole War officer was essentially a mix of a morale officer, ideological educator, civil affairs, loyalty enforcer, and also tactically a second-in-command. But aside from that, the support car had a 60mm mortar team with a team leader, gunner, loader, and ammunition man. And to round it off, the one-ton truck likely carried a mechanic and mechanic helper. The one-ton was the M601, which was a modified civilian truck given mainly as foreign aid in lieu of the actual American standard M37. Many South Vietnamese TONEs have these substitute foreign aid-specific vehicles in lieu of their U.S. Army equivalents. If you'd like to learn more about South Vietnamese armor, check out this video on how they used M113 armored personnel carriers as light tanks. I'll see you over there.